please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Here's a preview. The six steps to setting up your motorcycle to you. In this case, this is to rider weight. It is not about rider ability. We have a separate video for that. If you have a bike with no adjustability, we've got some videos for you. If you have a bike with preload and rebound only, we have some other videos that you can watch to help you understand how to do that using preload and rebound. And then what's most important before you start the task is that you need to understand what adjusters you have, where they are, and what they do. Some are dials, some are sockets, some are, in this case, spanners or wrenches because there's no room to get a socket in. Some are knobs. So you've got to figure out what you have before you get through this process. And in doing that process, when you go to work on the bike, you know where everything is. The other important part to remember is that it's damn near impossible to do it yourself. So you get a friend over. And the last point, either be in all your gear, all the time, for all the measurements, or don't. Just have t-shirt, shorts, shirt, get on and off the bike. Whichever way you do it, always do it the same way. Always. And then your results will always be consistent. Step number one, we need to measure fork bottom out and mark it. Because we have to know where maximum travel is, so. Fork bottom out, it's listed in the book as 110 millimeters. So we're gonna fully extend the fork and see what we've got. Wheel off the ground, leveraging the kickstand. So our total exposed distance is 130 millimeters. So easy to see, easy to spot, not a problem. Now, if you had a friend, he could mark 110, but we don't. So if we do the maths, 20 millimeters up will be bottom out. So we can now take our marker pen and go ahead and set the mark 20 millimeters up. So I'm gonna make this easy on myself. Start at zero. Yep. And now we know where bottom out is supposed to be. And when the fork travels, obviously it keeps pushing the cable tie down. The more travel you use, because this goes inside, this is bolted, then this will travel further and further down. And then at least we know how close we're getting to hitting bottom. Now to the back of the bike. Just like the front, it needs to be completely extended. In regards to damping, rebound and compression, they are both taps. All we're seeking to do hydraulically is find the right movement between compression and rebound. I'll always go to rebound first because we've gone ahead and set spring tension to set sag. So the first thing to do for me is get to the rebound damping and find the rising rate that works. Now let's cover a couple of things here just so you don't get misled. If you have, for example, a big piston fork where you have COM and 10 in both caps, it is damn near impossible to get the screws to line up in all the caps to be at the same setting. So you'll always find a mismatch between the rebound screws to each other and the compression screws to each other. And that's okay because you're counting from the bottom clockwise out. Always rely on the count, not the position of the screw. Clicks is easier because you're counting clicks, but that doesn't mean the screws are gonna line up either. The only case that that doesn't really matter is when you've got the Olin's forks, for example, where you have a three millimeter Allen. There's no upside right angle thing to look at. So bear that in mind and don't get drawn into that. The next piece is that the rebound setting in the fork will never in a million years match the rebound setting in the shock. 
oil wears at different rates. Different oil in the forks, different oil in the shock. So they'll never ever match. Compression damping front and rear, even though you start in the middle of the settings, quite often will not match either. They'll be very different because we have different talents for acceleration and we have different braking skills depending on the equipment we've got. So those will always be separate as well. And realize that the forks are nothing to do with the shock. The front of the bike is about corner entry, the back of the bike is about corner exit, and balance between rebound is all about mid corner. That gets us to the end of setting a bike up to a person's weights. Well, the next step is to tune the bike up, both for spring tension, preload, and damping to the person's ability. You ready for the next video? Catch the full video at DaveMossTuning.com. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email. Dave at DaveMossTuning.com